while FIB alum are sequestered in a soundproof booth. Manfred Wolfren, new broadcast division chairman, readies the broadcast hallway. come by and uh, we would like our students to see that indeed there's a future after graduation um, and it's getting tougher nowadays well it has always been tough but it continues so uh, look to the future we are very proud of that I assure you now over here this is the Frederick W. Zippel yeah. we just talked about it and uh, Howard Stringer was recognized last year Michael Bergerman was recognized this year uh, are those people that um they have nothing to do with CCM or Cincinnati? Nothing whatsoever. Okay. They have made a contribution to the field of broadcasting. Okay. And we recognize them basically in order to create a national visibility. And uh, we have the beautiful trophy that they give. And at that same event, which is underwritten by one of the local media companies, uh, this year Warner Cable underwrote it. And it happens in the... Uh, well, I thought they did Oh, they're the only ones who do <laughs> give uh, two awards to our students, and that's a $2,500 cash award. So that represents $5,000 to students. This may have been in existence already when you came, although I started this flag 
that's Rosemary Hanlon, she was a student here, uh, who died in an accident, and King's production sponsored uh, this award in, in her memory, and that's an $800 award. The Procter & Gamble Award, we started in 1990, that's a $3,000 cash award to the student, and they are going out and work in New York for Procter & Gamble Productions. Uh, the John J. Strader, you may know about the Strader, the Strader one. <laughs> according to this, it started in 1941, according to other records, it began in 1936. Phil used it as a coaster. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you guys want to go in here, this has changed a little bit. We only came in here when we were in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They discuss it with me, and then we establish contacts with the internship of the Graduate school is a reality to a good number of our students, uh, not all of them. As a matter of fact, a minority, but a good number. Uh, we have a board to advertise that, obviously. General notices. This room you will be familiar with. <laughs> Last I heard, he was living on the Mesa. Oh, yeah. And I was actually surprised how small the classrooms were. I had them, I thought they were so large and still not confined. It's a piece of ancient equipment. The rec room is adjacent to it. It is so clean, it would make you sick. Because I wanted to open it up. I don't mind. I mean, there's nothing that you can see. It's I'm a, I'm a Navy guy, so that's what I'm trying to But everything has to be exactly the way it ought to be. It would be a disconcerting change for those of us who are here. <laughs> yes, we would not. But you know, monitors, I mean, live monitors, preset, the same thing, audio, yeah. video, yeah. technical yeah. 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 I think that flashing turns, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does. Our light. from here, so this becomes a dedicated use production. And we switch from the same control room over there. We have acquired computers. This is all on the mainframe. The mainframe was like what is this? This is production room. But indeed, it's so powerful that it can uh, support 45 of these. Uh, uh, not more students than you see tables in here. Okay, great. You getting a feed on that, Bob? <laughs> You're having trouble with no teeny to be in. Say this tooth, I tripped on that door. Yeah? Yeah. Right there. Oh. All right. What you what? Tissues, tissues are available. Uh, yeah. Please don't talk to the monkeys while they're working. Oh, that's where I learned to do production time. Nice sound Gonna spend a lot of years in radio. Thank you. While we were acting in radio, we weren't necessarily pursuing this. Well, as I said a moment ago, this is the closest thing we have to radio. It is set up to simulate uh, radio work. And uh, again, when you look at the equipment, it's relatively new. Uh, Here's my oh, it hasn't changed. Yeah, the bulk erase. The bulk erase. <laughs> no, the Except they were smart enough to bolt it down. <laughs> <laughs> the intercoms sat there, and the interlocks were there as well. Yeah. Remember that? You'll, you'll see pictures of what this room was like uh, yeah, I'll have to go. see you display. Where are the cans? Where are the cans? Where's he on the airlight? Where's the, uh, the Western Union clock? All, uh, yeah. Well, you to be committed to this doesn't look here. anything like this. Five years ago. Well, I tell you, five years ago there was nothing. Five here. years ago, it was and the really next dismal. door had. Uh, we still have. I, I kept those two tape machines because one of these days I will display that as a memory. How old has exactly. it been? Six oh ones and six oh twos. The isolation room. It's still a ten. And it's got presets. Yeah. Yeah. At least that hasn't changed. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So what do you have? Where were we yeah. so far ago? Oh, the yeah. original, the original radio, uh, trans the radio series that we had. Uh, uh, for example, Cisco Kid started as a radio series. Uh -huh. Those original discs. They're, they're all up. They're all up above uh, the auditorium. That's exactly uh, where I they was, are. I was there. I saw. So that's that's what this area is all about. 
Adjacent, just on the opposite side, mm -hmm. we have two more rooms, very small ones, you may remember that. Right. And we have uh, half inch videotape editing base in there. Mm -hmm. Cuts only. Okay. Yeah, that was no, no more film. We printed yeah. the print. right. All those 16 millimeter, yeah, all those 16 millimeter blues have and the dark probably disappeared. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. End of the 1991 15 year WFIB reunion comes to a close in front of the monolith Sander Hall, where we all spent many a wonderful night.